hello guys welcome back again to dami dimension channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make a very elegant palazzo pant trust me this is going to be one of the best palazzo video you've ever seen because i'm going to be showing you how to achieve a fitting palazzo pant which is not so wide and not so slim as well also i'm going to be showing you how to achieve a perfect length for your palazzo because a palazzo pant has to have that perfect length in order to give it that very elegant look so make sure you watch the video from the beginning to the end and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and without further ado let's get started here with me i have my basic pants drafted already not drafted traced because i have it already on the channel if you haven't seen the video try to check it out i'll post the link in the description box and right here is the pattern from that video that i just traced out exactly as it is as you can see this one has seam allowance added already, but I traced it out without the seam allowance. So as you can see, it's exactly the same thing. But you can notice that I stopped it at the new area. That's because I want to extend my trouser to be a little bit longer than the one I have in the previous pattern because this is going to be a palazzo pant. And you know, tell me what's, what, what is a palazzo pant that is, you know, jumping? <laughs> What is a palazzo pant that is not long enough? I just want it to be flowy, you know, you know, that kind of vibe. So that's what I'm going for and I'm going to be extending it. So that's why I stopped right here and that's what we are going to be doing right now. But before I do that, let me just keep you in track with what I'm doing. Here is the hip line, if you remember, from the basic trouser pattern that I uh, show to you if you haven't seen that video please please go and check it out it is important and if you've forgotten something at all go and brush up your memory with that so here is the hip line and here is my crotch line this is tie line this is my um, knee line and here was my initial ankle line but I'm going to be extending it let me just make the ankle line visible as well so this was our initial ankle line. So the very first thing I'm going to be doing right now in order to extend this, I'm going to be adding extra six inches from this line. That's how much extension I want. If you want, you can add two inches, four, five, six, it depends whatever, however you want your uh, palazzo pan to be long. For me, I'm going to be adding six inches because I'm going to be wearing high heel with it and I want it to cover up my my heels so I'll put six inches and I also place the six inches here and then I will connect with a horizontal line so this now is my new ankle line new ankle line okay now I'm going to come to this point of my green line which is the center line I will come to this point and I'm going to initially I have my initial ankle line for my basic trouser to be 10 inches circumference. My ankle circumference was 10, which I divided by 2 to give me 5. And if you check my old pattern, this was my ankle line. And if I measure, you see that I have 5 inches from here to here, excluding the seam allowance. So it was 5, 2.5 here, 2.5 here, right? to make it five. So that was my initial ankle line. So I'm going to be transferring the same thing here as well. So I'm going to be having that same thing, 2.5 here and 2.5 here to make my initial five inches ankle line from my um, basic trouser pattern. All right. So now that I have these two points, I'll connect this point right here all the way to my knee and this one also all the way to the new here now i'm done making the connection as you can see so next i'm going to be coming to my crotch line so from here i'm going to take 0 0.75 here like this that's three quarter of an inch and from that point i will come down by half inch okay so next, I'm going to go to my new ankle line right here, and I'm going to be determining how wide I want my palazzo pant to be. This now totally depends on you. Some people can make it three inches, four inches, three and a half, two and a half. 
that totally depends on you but for me I'm going to be making use of 2.5 inches so from here I will take 2.5 inches and from here I will also take 2.5 inches here 2.5 2.5 okay so now that I have this two points I'm going to be connecting from this point all the way up to this point right here and from this one I'm going to be connecting all the way up towards my hip line but I, I'm not going to let it touch my hip line I'm going to let it stop at my crotch line right here as well and this is because I want my pants to be a bit fitted around my tie this is still my choice if you want you can connect from here all the way down to your hip line but if you do that you may have a bit of looseness from your hip line but for me I want to have a fitted shape around my tie so I'm going to be connecting towards my crotch line I'm just gonna do that so you can see what I'm talking about and then you're going to also make a smooth curve from this point towards this curve like this it's just kind of like you're extending this um, crotch curve to touch up with this point so as you can see I have made the connection all the way up and like I said I'm going to be extending this curve up to here like this as well And the next thing I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to be adding my seam allowance of half inch all around this pattern, but on the ankle line, I'm going to be adding two inches. Now the seam allowances has been added and the front panel is all done. And here is what it is looking like. Now that I'm done cutting on my front panel, here is what it looks like. And just in case someone is wondering why here is like this, this is the cutout for the pocket because this trouser is going to be having a pocket. If you don't want yours to have a pocket, then this one is just going to be complete. You just, you just have to close this part up. And from, again, I'm referring to that video of my basic pant pattern if you haven't seen it you have to watch it okay if you watch that video you will see how it was before i cut out this part so that's how it should be if you don't want to have the pocket so now i'm moving to the back panel and i have my basic back panel right here underneath and i have a fresh pattern paper on top of it ready to trace out the back panel just to duplicate it and take note that i'm going to be tracing out without the seam allowance so i'm going to be tracing out this inner line without the seam allowance as you can see i have traced out my back pattern just like i did to the front and i stopped at my new length so just like i did for the front i'm going to be adding my six inches extension i'll connect and I'm going to extend this green line also. And next thing, I'm going to draw my old ankle line, which is 10 inches divided by 2 is 5. And I'm going to take 2 inches on both sides, 2 and a half inches on both sides. And now I'll connect from this point all the way to my new line and from this point all the way to the new line. And once you're done with the extension right here, that if you want it, if you don't want, you may not do the extension here, but I want it to be long, like I said. So once you're done with that, then you're going to be working on the crotch area, just like we did for the front. And the reason why we have to add a bit to this um, crotch area is because this is a palazzo pan that is going to be free. So you want the smoothness from this down part that is going to be free to kind of blend up to this crotch area so that's why we have to make some modification to the crotch area as well so in order to do that i'm going to be drawing a straight line from this crotch line all the way so my crotch point here i will draw a straight line like this okay and on that straight line now i'm going to take one inch from here to here i'll take one inch Okay, and from that one inch point, I will come down by half inch. Okay, now I have the half inch point and we are going to be going to 
the ankle line as well. So from this new ankle line, I will take my 2.5 inches to this side and 2.5 inches to this side to form my wide leg shape, just like we did for the front. All right, now I have this point and this point, which I'm going to be connecting all the way up. From here to here is going to be a straight line, but for this one, from this point, you're going to draw a straight line and stop somewhere here. And then from this point, you're going to kind of make the line kind of blend with this one. I'm going to do that to show you. All right, and remember, you need to also make this curve blend smoothly to join up with this point. So the next thing to do is to add your seam allowance all around it, half inch all, all the way around here like this, and here I'm going to be adding two inches. And once you are done doing that, go ahead and cut out the pattern. Remember to add zipper allowance as well, depending on which part of your pant you want your zipper to fall. For me, I think I'm going to be placing it on the back side. So because of that, I'm going to be adding extra half inch to this one right here. I already added half inch to it. So I'm going to be adding extra half inch and I'm going to be taking a length of eight inches. From this blue line, I'm going to take eight inches downward. Okay, and I'm going to take half inch right here, half inch right here, and I will connect that together. Here is my eight inch point. I will take it out like this. So now, this right here is going to be my zipper allowance all right so now i'm going to go ahead and cut out this pattern and then we are going to be cutting on to the fabric and the next thing i'm going to be doing now is to draft my waistband and in order to draft the waistband you will need your pocket and pocket facing just to close up this part so you can have a straight a complete waistline right here so here is my pocket and pocket facing. Again, I'm going to be referring to my basic trouser video. Yeah, that is where I drafted this video. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. So I'm going to be placing this pocket now into its position right here, just so I can have a complete waistline. You don't need this one actually. You can take this one out of it and make use of only this one. So what you need to do is to make sure that this end aligns with this end and this edge right here aligns with this edge right here. Okay, like that. So once you're done doing that, you can tape it down so you can use your complete waistline. Once you're done taping down the pockets, then go ahead and fold in one and a half inches. So take one and a half inches from the up and fold it in. And this is going to represent your waistband. All right, after folding that in, also fold in your dart. So you are kind of pretending as if you've sewn the dart already. So fold in the dart and then grab a fresh pattern paper and place the waistline onto the fresh pattern paper like this. And then you are going to be tracing out this waistline. So now I'm done tracing it out. I'm just going to make that a little bit bolder for you guys to see. And then I'm going to be taking one and a half inches up. And then I will recreate this curve right here, connecting the points together. And then I will square up these edges. And after that is done, I'm going to be adding half inch joining allowance around this waistband. But I'm not going to be adding any waist, uh, seam allowance here because I'm going to be cutting this part on fold. And now my waistband for the front is done. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out this shape and I'm also going to be drafting my back waistband the same way I just drafted this one. Here is my back 
panel facing once I was done doing it as well and as you can notice that I added my seam allowance all around this one but for the front panel I didn't add it here because I'm going to be cutting it on fold. As you can see now I've started cutting on my pattern and I cut out four pieces for my back band, two for the facing and two for the main fabric. For my front band I also cut out two pieces on fold, one for the facing and the other one for the main fabric. For my pocket I also cut out two pieces, I folded in my, um, I folded in one and a half inches as you can see and I added half inch here to join to the waistline and for the pocket facing i also cut out two pieces and i added half inch at the top here as well as you can see and here is my front panel i cut it exactly as it is on my pattern i folded in one and a half inch and i added half inch back to the waistline and for the back i did the same i cut two pieces and i folded in one and a half inches and i added also half inch at the waistline to join you see the half inch to join to the waist band so here is my front panel i place them right sides facing each other as you can see and i have also marked my dart which i'm going to take to my sewing machine and sew it right away and once that is done place them again right sides facing each other and we are going to sew on the crotch like this by half inch so now once that is done as you can see i've sewn on the crotch line and i also sew in my dart and here is my back panel to be joining it the same way i did to the front but this one i'm not going to start from the top i'm going to place my um, zipper like this so i can know where to start to sew as you can see i place my zipper to extend a little bit above because my band is also going to partake in that zipper you know so i'm going to start sewing a little bit now into my zipper so i'm starting from here i will sew all the way like this by half inch so once i'm done doing that this is what i have you can see my zipper area is left opened and now I'm moving to my pocket so grab your pocket and place it right sides facing and sew like this by half inch do the same thing as well to the other side and once that is done go ahead and notch the curvy area and then you flip it to the other side like this and then give it a good good press do the same thing to the other side as well and once I'm done doing that, this is what it looks like. It's coming so neat already. Now I'm moving to my uh, pocket facing. You are going to place it like this, right sides facing each other. And you are going to sew like this by half inch. Do the same thing to the other side as well. Once I'm done doing that, this is what I have. You can see my pocket is standing on its own and functional. So set that aside and I'm working on my band. Here I have my back band, two for the main fabric, two for the facing. I'll place two for the main fabric together and sew like this by half inch. Place the facing together as well and sew like this by half inch. Once you're done, open it up and I will show you what it looks like. So this is what mine looks like after doing that to my front band and to my back band as well. And I'm notching as you can see and after notching, I will flip it like this and give it a good press once i'm done doing that this is what they look like and now i have my back um panel and i have already done that side i'm going to be showing you how to do the other side so you open up your band like this the one you're having for the main fabric place it onto the right side of your trouser and sew like this by half inch and once you're done doing that you should have something that looks like this one that i have already done so once that is done you can do the front as well the same way you place the one you want to use as your front which is the main fabric you place it right side facing your uh, pant and so join them together by half inch like this and once i'm done doing that this is what i have looking nice already and as you can see my uh, band is still opened the main purpose of doing that is to have a clean finish of my band area later on. So now I'm placing the two front and back right sides facing each other and I need to join on the side. And here is how I'm going to be doing it. So I will place it right sides facing each other like this. And then I will start from the band area. Open up your band and make sure you match the waistline like so. Match it very well. And then you are going to make sure your pocket is out of the way so you don't commit any error so you are going to go ahead and stitch starting from the top here all the way down to your hemline 
I'm sewing by half inch and then I will do the same to my crotch I will sew my crotch by half inch as well and I will repeat the same thing to this side as well I will sew by half inch all the way to my hemline once I'm done doing that this is what I have as you can see and like I said I started sewing here from my waistline I opened up my uh, band and I stitch all the way down as you can see so the next thing to do now is to insert your zipper I have a video on already on my channel on how to insert an invisible zipper I'll post the link in the description box so once you're done inserting the zipper now we need to flip down the band like this and then you are going to fold in your half inch seam allowance make sure this seam allowance is out of the way move it up like so and then you flip down your band fold in your half inch sewing allowance like this and then you are going to be top stitching onto that waistband but the best way to actually do this is to do it from the right side and this method is called a stitch in the ditch and how you do it is that you come to the right side like this and you stitch directly where your waistband meets with the main trouser and just place the stitch right there and it's going to be catching the folded band underneath and once you're done with that go to your hemline and hem the down part and overlock all of the raw edges i have a video on how to use your regular sewing machine as an overlocking machine on my channel i'll post it also in the description box and once all that is done that's it about this beautiful trouser now i'm going to try it on to show you what it looks like so this is the result of our trouser guys i'm so pleased with the outcome everything looks exactly how i want it to look like it's not so wide the length is just perfect due to the extension that i just showed you how i added in the video i am the kind of person that usually doesn't like wide trouser but this one is so different i'm in love with it i love it you guys try this out try out my method and Tag me on Instagram at Dami Dimension and on Facebook. You can uh, like our Facebook page as well to get updates from us and follow us also on Instagram as well. You can share your creations with us. So I'm just trying to show you here the effect of that extension. You can see how it makes it look so elegant. If I didn't add that extension, this is the level that that trouser would have been. But yeah, this is the result of our work today i love it leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let's meet again next time bye